As promised, I shall be doing a review of the medium-sized, well actually it's one centimeter smaller than medium size, which is what I discovered, um, classic perfume bottle embroidered Chanel bag. So there's embroidery on this bag, let's do a close-up of it so you can see it from all its angles, the bottles on the downside, on the, I mean underneath it, on the side, the back, the other side, which is one kind of piece of embroidered fabric going all the way around, and then we have the front. This is a um, single chain but uh, doubled up, so you, it has four rings on the top. It is a single flap bag, which is very practical in this case. Let's take all these, let's take the padding out of it. So we do not have the embroidery on the inside, which simplifies usage quite a bit, because it's very sleek and clean. The bag is made in France. There is no leather on this bag. The bag is completely made in denim, except for the Made in France tag. That's, from the feel of it, I would say this is lambskin, but you never know. The inside has one pocket, accessible just like that by hand, and then another one on top of it, which you access via this zipper. And then on the inside, we have the authenticity card put down here and the zipper itself carries the Chanel name or logo on it on one side it says Chanel on the other the double C this is a sort of ruthenium kind of vintagey looking silver hardware bit um, what I find extremely interesting is the extent of work they went to that extra mile that they did to get this bag done. Because first of all, what is super luxurious about it is the fact that um, you have to understand for them to make a pocket like this that matches perfectly with the background means that they had to, I mean, in a way, if we talk about saving the world and climate and um, saving our materials, what they did was extremely not practical and functional because you need to, you create a lot of garbage and extra material that you throw away in order to match up two pieces of fabric like this. Because to get this pocket to match up with the back of the bag, that means that they had to cut off from a different, from an extra piece of fabric with this embroidery. All of this leftover residue was thrown away. So basically this was made just for the pocket. Now what do I say, what do I mean when I say this was, this piece of fabric was made just for the pocket? Because I have noticed inside of the pocket, for example, here we have the, and it goes up above the pocket, we have the Chanel Chance bottle, and it's all puffy and kilted, so well kilted. However, and only the top of the bottle on the inside is kilted, but on the inside of the pocket, they went that extra mile to not puff up the bottle. So the inside, the inner bottle, the piece of fabric used, which is one continuous piece of fabric going all the way to the back, th that bottle on the inside was not puffed up. Only the outer pocket was puffed up, the bottle, which is kind of embroidered to the borders here. The same happened to the Chanel number no. 5 bottle. They have puffed up this kind of border line side of the bottle and on the inside of the pocket it's not puffed up so they kind of had to do that as well that's extra work which a lot of people just when they purchase bags like this they don't notice that they don't care for that sort of detail but that sort of detail went into making this bag and I'm super pleasantly surprised that the French uh, manufacturing the, the factory that does the Chanel bags outside of Paris went that extra mile to do that not to talk about each and every stitch or embroidery from one piece of fabric to the other, it's just so perfectly aligned. 
it's insane the amount of work that went into this. And still, this bag costs kind of like half the price of what it would cost if it were the leather version. Let's get to the um, measurements of it. We're going to do it in centimeters, guys. So the length of the bag, you see the medium would be, the medium timeless classic double flap would be 26 centimeters. This one is 25. So it's smaller by one centimeter. The height, usually they measure the bags from the flap down. So this is 15 approximately. 15. Yeah, 15. Let's say 15. 15 to 16, but I would go more for 15. And then the uh, side, the width is 5.5 to 6 centimeters. The chain drop is the classic Chanel chain drop. It's super short. So if we do single chain and crossbody, we get a very um, high, high fit. As you can see here, almost like a yeah, fanny bag style. Uh, otherwise, you can't wear it like that, which to me, I don't know. I prefer it crossbody, but both versions are okay. Otherwise, you could double up the chain and have it really tiny. Of course, for guys, this is the only way kind of I don't like to carry a Chanel bag because as much as I want all these things to be genderless this is kind of too I don't know but this is a cool way to carry it now let's measure the drop when the chain is doubled so you get an idea we have 20 24 centimeters if the chain is single we get a drop of 42, 42 centimeters. So what else is there to say? Except that I am so in love with this bag that um, especially with all the bottles embroidered into it that I'm kind of, you know, starting to consider whether or not, and I've spoken to to some of you on, on Instagram in, in direct messages and stuff asking your opinion. So thank you so much for your support, both MJ and Mariam in particular, um, because I've been considering to hunt down the jumbo version of this one instead. Now, I have spoken to my essay. It's all possible and doable. I could exchange this one for the other one because I'm still within the exchange time. So as you can see, when there are Chanel dramas, there are Chanel dramas, but then when there are some positive Chanel things happening, they I also tell you about them because I think it's amazing that they go that extra mile to say, you know what, Jacob, if it makes you happier to get more bottles on a bag, uh, we'll, we'll do everything to hunt down the bigger one for you, which is great news. Um, so I'm considering getting the jumbo version of this beautiful denim bag. Now, they do exist in this dark blue navy denim but they also uh, exist in a light denim light blue version a bit more maybe reminiscent of the 80s not washed denim mind you it's all like kind of one hue of blue with a background of white as you can see also here when I come in as close as possible you see that there's like blue and a bit of you know white underneath the texture of the denim However, I do prefer the dark blue version more than the light. So maybe sometime pretty soon you will see an unboxing and or slash minus plus review of the jumbo version. Now I do not have the budget to afford both. Had I the budget to afford both, I would be getting both because they suit two different purposes. Now I haven't tried the jumbo on yet because we're still hunting it down, but let's see what happens. Fingers crossed it works out so I get to compare them side by side. Um, but I do think that kind of with this sort of embroidery, I really want it to shine and be as big as possible, as, m as many bottles as possible, because we would jump from 25 centimeter to a 30 centimeter width, and then the height would go high, 
is higher as well. So it's a totally different type of bag. And since I'm tall, considering that the bags were kind of conceived for, for girls, um, the jumbo would not look like a jumbo would look on a smaller figure. So the jumbo might kind of on me in this denim look turn out to be more medium-ish looking and the medium indeed looks like a really small version and since I do have my small timeless classic in caviar leather which is smaller than this one um, that really fits perfectly up here like a fanny bag or I could wear it also as a necklace and I love that bag to pieces so I don't kind of really need exactly the same direction I mean I would love to have it but you know I'm just you know, spilling it out there, handing it in to you guys to let you know this is the debate I'm having at the moment. You could let me know in the comment section down below, do you prefer the jumbo or do you think I should stick to the medium? I cannot show you the jumbo yet because it's not there, but I probably will be getting the jumbo, all things considered. Um, the difference in price, you know, if you're going to make a jump from a medium that's one centimeter smaller than a medium to a jumbo that's true to size jumbo, uh the difference in price is around 300 euro. So once you're already investing so much money into a bag, that 300 euro jump is not as steep as you would think it would be. You know what I mean? It's money, but uh, it's a jumbo too. And it's a jumbo that costs half the price of what a leather jumbo would cost, which I don't want. Because again, close to the jumbo is my reissue, the 255, the black one. If you guys, um, I think most of you know it already. If not, you could check out my um, review in the description box down below. That reissue is slightly smaller because it's a medium reissue, but it's the same price of a jumbo. So I do call it a jumbo, but uh, it's by a centimeter shorter than the jumbo. And it's also perfect, except the chain is a bit shorter than the jumbo chain. So I am looking forward to the jumbo chain for my personal body, but let's see how it works. I also prepared my Lambskin Chevron uh, Seasonal uh, Cruise 1516 uh, Seoul bag to compare them side by side so you can see how these two bags that are both considered medium by Chanel, how they differ actually in size. So if we place them really side by side and squish them in like that, you could see how smaller the denim is there. Here they're aligned, and on this side, they're not. So if we measure them, their length, let's do that quickly. The denim, again, would be 25-ish in length, and the, 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 what's it called? Oh, that's weird. Here it gives me also 25, 26. 25 to 26 which is awkward because when you put them side by side they are one is shorter than the other but when you measure them let me check the bottom huh well that's interesting when I measure the top okay so at the bottom they're practically the same length 25 and 25 and the top the top is too. Well, go figure. Well, guys, I guess I answered my own question whether or not I want the jumbo or the medium because uh, I was convinced it was shorter, but it's not. It's the same size, and I really don't need twice the same bag size. I, I would like it to differ a little bit, except you could see these the, the holes are, are tighter on the jeans than they are on the uh, lambskin chevron. They're like more inwards, and on the chevron, they're a bit more close to the edge there. But this is maybe to save, I don't know, to make it more sturdy because the rings are further away from the edges, avoiding it to rip or whatever. Even though I don't think they would rip because they just... This bag, yes, it's in denim, but it's super sturdy. Oh, one important note to say again before we finish. I've been asked by some of you to describe the smell of, of a denim Chanel bag. Well, let me tell you how it smells like, because that was actually the first thing I did. Well, the first thing I did was to check if it was made in France, yes or no, and it was made in France. The second thing was to smell it. And you guys know me, I am very much into smells and scents. And it's super particular. Now that little tiny bit of leather in there smells like leather, that little tag with the, with the made in France part. And the denim, I don't know what they put 
underneath it like there's something to make the bag more sturdy it's not cardboard it's it's something soft and flexible and movable but it, it gives it that extra shape it smells like denim it it smells slightly leathery mm. It smells new. It smells like like new, fresh denim. You know, denim can sometimes go a bit bad and be stale, a bit moldy or whatever, smell like humid. This one doesn't at all. It smells like dry denim as if it had been in a box with a leather bag. And so it absorbs some of that slight, slight hint of leather smell. But it almost smells smoky because it's mixed with this cottony material, which is denim but reminiscent of what a denim jersey could be. So here we go to that kind of reminiscence of Chanel jersey bags. The inside of the bag is a different material yet again. It's it's a cottony... It's not denim. This is more cotton. I don't know if it's synthetic or if it's cotton. I would hope that it's synthetic, to be honest with you, because I would like a little bit of artificiality on this bag because that would guarantee its resistance. A lot of you have been asking me also, Does it? do you think it's going to stand the test of time how is it going to wear i don't know i'll have to let you know guys in some time um i do believe and the reason why i opted for denim one of the many reasons is because i do think it wears very nicely especially a darker denim why because denim looks really cool when you wear jeans look better the more you wear them so my idea is um to not baby this bag too much. Of course, I'm not going to go out in the rain. And of course, I'm going to be super careful that it's not humid outside when I wear it. And yes, it's going to be a pain in the butt to always be careful about the weather before I decide whether or not to wear the bag. Because also the chains are not intertwined with leather, but with denim. And so this is going to rub as well, you know, against the clothes and also against the metal rings down here. When you pull the chain, every time you pull, you know, that denim does rub against metal. But... I have seen many photos of vintage denim Chanel bags and they look gorgeous even 20 years, 25 years after they were manufactured because denim ages really well, you know? It's like good leather, like a good leather jacket. The more you use it, it gets that patina or that patina of, of, of use and wear, but it gives it that character. So I will be extremely careful with the edges because, you know, denim can break open and so you could have holes there. But since the inside has this kind of double layer and it's super well padded and protected, it, it's going to be fine. Like even if this rubs off a little um, and gets, you know, turns lighter with time, it's going to look really chic that way too because denim needs to look used. And I am thinking more and more that, uh, jump, especially now that I compare the two sizes and, you know, the love of my life, this little uh, seasonal cruise chevron, which I have been wearing the most of all my Chanel bags up to now because it's the most carefree of the leathers that I have. Um, to have the same shape again in, in the denim, except with a slightly, you know... At this point, I don't even know if the chain is any different. Let's check that. The length of the chain... Ah, well, there we have a noticeable difference. So, <laughs> the denim is a shorter chain, definitely. You could see, like, that's how much shorter the, the denim ends there and the chevron ends way lower. So that's a big difference. But the length of the bag is the same in both cases. Um, but it does answer my questions on my own since I do have two bags of the exact same shape. Oops, Dago, what did you do? I will try to hunt down that jumbo and then I'll let you guys know. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you appreciate a bit more some of their, you know, some of the Chanel bags still to date have uh, craftsmanship and a lot, a lot, a lot of attention to detail going into the manufacturing. And I have the feeling that they do that mostly with more experimental bags like this one. They might get a bit sloppier with bags that are a bit more standard, classic, that they do over and over and over and over again for years and years and years. But when it comes to something new like this, where the embroideries are super special, uh, I have the feeling that even the workers that work there, you know, the the, the artisans, whatever you want to call them, that they kind of get a bit more excited about it. And they put a little, that just like that tiny little pinch of salt, of, of, of pepper extra 
within the, the care of the attention to detail. Because I totally noticed in this bag, it's crazy how much detail went into it. And the embroidery, I still haven't figured it out and I've been checking it in all lights possible and imaginable. The denim is dark blue, yes. The embroidery, the embroidered bottles, you know, the essay told me it's black. I, for the love of me, I can't figure it out if it's black or really, really dark blue. It's def If it's blue, it's darker than the actual denim. But it might be black. I wish it were black. So I'm just going to say it's black because I love the juxtaposition of dark blue and black. A lot of people hate that. I personally adore it. And it's also very typical for Chanel to combine dark blue and black. Uh, th which is another reason why I prefer more the dark blue denim version to the light blue version of this bag. Because the light blue just has like a slightly darker light blue embroidery on light blue denim. If this indeed were to be black on dark blue... Ah, paradise. Okay, guys, I'm done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this review. If you have, please do thumb it up and share this video with all the people you love. And uh, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Medium or jumbo? Um, if And also, if you do have this bag yourself, let me know your opinions on it. How have you been using it till now? And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And don't forget, no matter how much they judge you for what you want to purchase and what you want to spend your hard-earned money on, smile back, say thank you for your opinion, but it went there, in, there, out. And don't ever forget to never give up on love. Love ya, bye.